there's one thing that all of the biggest brands in the world, the greatest brands in the world, there's one thing that they share. Every single one of them have a brand identity, a brand personality that people find exciting or interesting or intriguing, or at least they want to be identified with. How do you do that? Well, there's 20 questions that you can ask is gonna help you identify and create the brand that all of your customers want you to be, and that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So what are we talking about when we talk about brand identities? Well, when you think of certain brands, there's an identity that's attached there. When you think of Apple, you know, today Apple is kind of, I don't know, amalgamous. They don't really stand for much of anything. They're in a competition with Samsung and with Google. And, and so Apple has really just become a Me Too brand now, but that's because they're a leader in the market and everybody else is trying to, trying to take their spot away. But when you go back a few years ago, what you're gonna find is Apple kind of made their brand identity about being a rebel. You go back to like the 1984 commercial where it was like us and Apple against this evil world, right? And and we we identified with that. It, it, it allowed us to kind of choose a side and say, well, we're, we don't like status quo. You know, we don't like the old stuffing. And then you move into the fact, you know, those old commercials with I'm a, I'm a Mac and I'm a PC. Again, it was, it was helping create an identity around their brand where Mac was this cool guy and PC was this nerdy guy with those spreadsheets. You know, Mac, he was surfboards and pictures and videos and cool stuff. And, and you know, PC was spreadsheets and old, you know, cold programs and, and all of that. It was, it was about identity. And so one of the questions that you need to ask is what personality is your brand going to have? What's his personality? Now, Understand that if you pick a personality, which you which you very much should, if you pick a personality, you're going to have to build that brand around that personality. What that means is you're going to be drawing a line in the sand and you're going to be making a personality that some people will not like. You can't please all the people all the time. Any brand that tries to please everyone ends up not having an identity at all. So while Apple was, you know, cool or whatever, you did have a crowd over here that was saying, hey, I like spreadsheets, you know, um, and therefore the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC commercials did not impress them. Even in 1984, when it was this big, you know, IBM is the bad guy. And we had that commercial where they threw the sledgehammer. There was a crowd of people that was saying, you know what, we're not evil. And, and it's not like that Apple, you're, you're um, arrogant, you know, you're this little company that's never done anything. And here you are, you're and so when you create a brand identity, what it's going to do is it's going to be polarizing, but you really want that. You want to make your per your you want to make your perfect customer really identify with you and the people that are not good fits, you really kind of want to push them away. So the question again is what personality do you, do you want your brand to have? Another question that you should consider is how does your brand make your customers feel? When your customers have your product, when they buy it, when they take it out in public or, you know, other people see that they are an owner of your product or your service, how does that make them feel? If, if the answer is, well, they don't feel proud, they don't feel happy, then you have a problem, right? If, <laughs> if your customers are not proud to be the customers, then you're either a lousy product and they wish that they weren't your customers or your product and service is so meh that they don't even think about it. You know, they're a customer, but they don't think about other people even knowing. But when it comes to great brands, they make their customers feel something. When you go back to the big boom of Apple through, you know, the iPod and the iPhone and Steve Jobs and, and he kind of pioneered these events where he would unveil the new features and everything, and everybody started ooing and aahing over his ability to give a presentation. All of that kind of happened over like a 10 year span of, of Apple. Before that, you know, nobody really cared that much. But when you bought an Apple product then, when you bought that iPhone and you're walking around with everyone, it was a conversation piece. 
I got the touchscreen iPhone. I remember buying that first model iPhone. I was blown away. I remember watching the presentation and having my mind blown. I wanted it so bad. And when I got it, it was something that I wanted to show everyone. That product made me feel like I had something valuable, made me feel like I wanted to share it with everybody else. How does your product, your brand, make people feel when they become a customer? If it's not exciting, if it's not good, if it's not great, if it's not I want to tell other people about this, maybe you should rethink your brand identity. How can you package your service, even if it's a commodity, how can you package it in a way that makes people feel like they have something great, like they're a part of something great, right? Um, Southwest Airlines did this. When all of the airlines were saying, well, we're going to start charging for bags, we're going to start charging for bags, and all the airlines were, you know, long faces, and it was it was just this bad time in airlines, Southwest came along and said, hey, we're the friendliest airline, you can bring all your bags for free, or at least two bags, right, for free. They, they stepped aside, and even though they were an airline just like everyone else, even though they take you from, you know, Florida to Seattle just like everybody else, even though you get on the plane, you have to go through TSA, you have to do everything pretty much exactly like everyone else, they they stepped aside and said, we're going to be different. We want our customers to feel special that they're flying with Southwest. And one of the like gutsiest things is they took their product off of things like Expedia. So I can buy Delta. I can buy, I can buy, you know, what's a blue. I can buy American, all that stuff on Expedia. I can get the cheap fares. But for Southwest, I have to go to Southwest.com. They're different. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of Southwest, but some of my family are. And they, they will only fly Southwest because they've identified with that message. So again, how do you make your customers feel? There's 20 questions total in a piece of content that I'm going to link to in the description. A lot of these questions will make you rethink how your brand is positioned, make you rethink uh, how you're packaging it, how you're positioning against your, your uh, competitors and all of that. If you'd like to read all of those questions, click the link below and it's going to take you to an article that's going to walk you through all 20 of those questions. Hopefully you've enjoyed this content. I'm Ryan Scott from Brandvius and I'll see you on the next video.